All right, I think that's it on that. Now we can talk about, let's see, do we talk about the, uh, oh yeah, ruining music for you. Let's do that first. Okay, so the thing is, what's gonna help you in picking a song is uh, to understand how music is written now. How music is written now is a lot different than the way it was written a while ago. And I'll show you uh, what we mean by that. <coughs> Most streamed track ever on Spotify. It was the first day I'd ever been in the seat. The first, literally the first thing he did was he walked over to a keyboard and played. No, these guys are writing the song with him. So that's what they're telling you. They're writing the song with him, but what did he just play? He walked in and the first thing he does is play this. That's, that's like the whole song. Yeah. That's the whole song. So. And then I was kind of like, oh yeah, that's, that's a good start. Thanks, thanks. That's a good start. That's a good start. Okay, let's see what he adds. Yeah, I started doing that thing on the guitar that he does. And then like it. You heard what he did, right? Yeah. There it is. That's what he added to the song. <laughs> well, it's a little different than that. But, but that's... You'll hear, you'll hear. That's that's the rest. That's it. Goes out and he says, "Look, I'm still on the guitar." So he was doing that in the studio, and Steve said, "Can we get Genius. that on the loop straight away? If we get give me a, give me a clean track." And he just starts layering over the top. This is 15 minutes into meeting him. You know, and we're we're away. We're off. I'm always a fan of keeping it more strict because I'm 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 an acoustic artist first and foremost, and when I play live, I can't replicate all these things. I haven't got any other musicians. So you don't need anything else because that's the percussion. That's Ed. Ed is the instrument. We can admit that Ed Sheeran is a great performer. He did start on the street and when he does his show, he typically doesn't have a band with him. He typically just like, he'll play the thing right there and then he'll loop it and then he'll play the next thing and he'll loop it and he'll do the whole thing by himself. That's impressive, especially when you're in front of like 20,000, 50,000 people, right? You gotta at least be able to admit that. But we're talking about creating the songs right now. So the other guy writes the music. This guy writes the lyrics. So one of the things I did to try and keep him in the room while I would be working on a track, I would have like a suitcase full of Lego, I'd pull into the hotel room and say, there you go, you built that. And it was great because he would sit and build the Lego and kind of get lost in, the, in that world for a second and come up with this, this moment that was everything. Yeah, you heard that right. They bring Legos to keep him there and to like help him to just, like, just stay there and play with your Legos while we do all the hard work, right? Yeah, they just said that. <laughs> and that's probably a good method, like having something that you're doing, uh, some monotonous task while you're thinking. Sure, that's fine. So let's hear what he came up with. So we're not talking about the strumming of the guitar here. It's just the melody that he's doing with the humming. That's... I mean, you already have the chords to the song, so adding that melody to it is really not far-fetched. I come up with that same melody every time I pick up my guitar because I'm, I'm always going to go back and strum those same four chords, which are what? G, D, E minor, C, in that order, and then just drag it up and down on the guitar, like frets changing, changing the pitch. It's the same song. It's always the same song. Like there's so many songs with those exact chords. And so when you try and come up with a melody to match that one, it's really 
this is the most basic one. Like you're gonna come up with that yourself no matter what. There were some moments that I found on, on the, the shaving tapes which, which were really interesting. I'll be my baby, I'll be my baby, So that's that's a so they just loop it for like an hour or however many minutes they they do until he comes up with the melody and, and puts together some pretty basic lyrics super generic come on be my baby and then this guy comes and he complicates it and he develops things into a more structured song that has something else going on and there's a couple other sections where he starts picking at the lyrics that Ed Sheeran keeps trying to use. But that's pretty much uh, enough of it. Now let's, let's look at the song itself. What's he saying? Or let's, let's step back for a second. Is there any language on this prompt that you find unclear? Any wording that, that maybe you need a little bit more of a definition for what I, what I want from you with it? Subversive, all right. What about cliche? Do, do you guys are, re still remember the definition of cliche? Yeah? What is it? I don't really know how to say like, what is the definition. You got like 30 people to help you out. <laughs> well, you gotta give them a little something. Maybe name a cliche or something for a store. To me, it's like something that's just common, like people commonly use, like sayings and stuff. Name some cliche sayings. It was meant to happen. It was meant, to, it was just meant to be. It was meant to happen. What? Beauty is power. Beauty is power. Absolutely. What about some like loved ones? Love conquers all. Love conquers all. Anything yeah. else? <laughs> Love is in the air. With that, um, <laughs> it was just for breeze. Was that one Bible verse count as a cliche? Where, like, so, Love is, not kind. Love is kind right? Of Whether it's a cliche or not, people definitely have made it into a cliche. Once it's on a coffee cup, it's not necessarily a cliche, but it can definitely be used like one and and someone's using it like one if it's on a coffee cup probably um, be, uh, especially when you just regurgitate so it's stuff that you say without thinking about because you don't want to go any deeper with it and it's just this kind of like pass it off thing uh, at least but there's there's more to it than that this is just how we use them love is a battlefield <laughs> what's love got to do with it it is I think I said this one before the heart wants what the heart wants. What's that one mean? What it means. What does it really mean? When do people say that? When they're in love. And they go back to the same mistake when they're trying to justify When they're trying to justify something. And yes, that's what you're getting at. What? Or when you're going against something that you know you shouldn't be going for. Yeah, like, I don't know, maybe cheating on someone. Hey, the heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> or, uh, you know she's a 13-year-old girl, though. The heart wants, oh, yeah, now we're not really laughing anymore, but it's like, that's typically when you use that language. But what does that language sound like? It sounds like a romanticized view of something that you're really just trying to justify and you know is probably wrong. And it's not always like that with cliches. But oftentimes, it's, it's something that we don't want to delve too far into, and we just want to make it this, this stereotype, pretty much. We want to do a surface-level view of it. Do you guys get what I mean by romanticize? It doesn't just have to be a love thing. Romanticized things could be anything, whatever it is. It's like putting a filter on it, like putting a Snapchat filter on something and making it look different than it really is. Do you get it? <laughs> It typically looks more like what you want it to look like. Like when people do the, the weird like bunny ears or the dog ears or the halo thing or the, the crown thing, but really the only reason they're doing it is because they like that it makes their eyes look bigger. And so they just use it and they're like, oh, oh this is fun, but it's really, I like what I look like like this better. <laughs> uh, but no one's really admitting that. People even make it like their profile pictures or whatever, so anyway. Don't pull out your phones now to change your profile picture. <laughs> okay, so I think we get what cliche is, then subversive. What then is subversive? Any guess? Is it like the, the verse that's under the chorus? It's a subverse? What, what do you think? What do you think it could possibly mean? Like the underlying meaning, like the meaning behind the actual. I mean, we're trying. Um, 
So if I can give you a metaphor, right, or a, or a, a word picture, it's like flipping a table. The cliche is a table and you're flipping it over. You're overthrowing what people just look to as the norm and you are making fun of it. A deeper meaning does come in typically saying this is bullcrap, but that is a deeper meaning. You're exposing something to show what it really is. So it goes kind of hand in hand with that. So sometimes it'll show a cliche, but it'll make fun of it or something. It's typically satirical or uh, sarcastic. So you want us to talk about make fun of the lyrics? No, it, I want you to analyze them. Sometimes that may look like ripping it apart, or it doesn't necessarily have to be ripping it apart. It's exploring the, the true meaning behind it. And some lyrics are already doing that. Think about what it's doing that with. The cliche is not the lyric itself, it's the idea that the lyric presents. There's generic phrasing, words that people say that for sure that's a cliche itself, but then there's the idea behind it. So if there's cliche lyrics, they're presenting an idea to you. And so when you bring that idea in, even if the lyrics are different lyrics than people normally use, but it's just the same old idea, that is an idea that's really just like a romanticized view of something, a subversive song may come over and take that idea and break it into pieces and laugh at it or make it look so ridiculous that it falls apart. But they'll be playing with that idea. Then what's real? You're writing all this stuff down, right? Yeah. Breaking it up. You don't have to like word for word. <laughs> So that's the thing though, that's why cliches are so powerful, is because cliches relate to you, right? So, so real relates to you in a real way, but cliches can also relate to you. That's why they're so rampant, because there's something in a cliche that anyone can grab hold of. And they can be like, oh yeah, it's that. And it's just the easy, the easy place to go with it. But there's something special about real. And it's surprising that it's actually one of the harder things to explain. But we're going to explain it, or we're going to see what it is as we go through some lyrics. What? I have a question regarding mm -hmm. the prompt. So we're analyzing a song, and then we're making an argument against the message, or like supporting the message. Mm -hmm. So how would you explain that? Um, like, how would you explain that it's like a different song, but it's still like supporting the message? Like, how would you explain that? Um, like, it's like a different song, but it's still like supporting the message. In the way that it's kind of like teaching, possibly. So you basically use the evidence to prove, to see if it but it's either doing something good or bad. Yeah. No, I see where you're going. Picking up what you're putting down. Does this sound like you guys can do this? Huh? We're gonna find out what realistic is. So ignore the reading on the front. There is an unrelated uh, list of songs on the back that we're gonna cover a bit of. So yeah, not that one yet. Go to Shape of You. It's there. That song. So let's talk about it. What's that song about? And first, real cliche or subversive? What do you think? I know we, we don't really have the definitions fully fleshed out yet, but. Cliche. Maybe. All right, let's, let's explore. The club, the club isn't, isn't the best place to find a lover. So yeah, what's the song about? Is it about finding a lover? No, it's not? Well, what do we mean? What does he mean by a lover? I mean, he's British, so I mean, lover could be like just someone to sleep with, right? <laughs> so then we get the bridge. Who wants to sing it? No, I don't. I don't have it. Who's got the key? <laughs> Girl, you know I want your love. <laughs> your love was handmade for somebody like me. Come on now, follow my lead. I may be crazy, don't mind me. Say boy, and this is where it gets good because he actually does the girl's voice, right? You guys have heard that you have all heard this song. He actually does the girl's voice. He goes up in a pi up a pitch, maybe one octave or something, and he's like uh, doing like this. Yeah, this is the funny thing. So what does he have the girl say? Boy, let's not talk too much. Grab on my waist and put that body on me. Come on now, follow my lead. Come on now, follow my lead. So, by the way, it's interesting that this is the voice that he gives to the woman. Do you think that's what a woman would typically say? 
ever. No, unless it's the girl that uh, that Chance was talking about, and and maybe she saw the ice on his wrist or something like that. Typically, I don't think he's meeting that girl at a bar. He would meet that girl at a club, right? So I don't know what's going on here, but it's really nice to put words in the girl's mouth, don't you think? This is like what the guy wants. The guy, if she said, let's go and watch The Notebook, or P.S. I Love You and cry, he would probably be like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going to stay at the bar with my friends until another girl comes up. What does he feel? Uh, so what is he saying to this girl? I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet, like a magnet do. Although my heart is falling to you, I'm in love with your body. Yeah, so what's, what's he saying to her? Is this love? Baby, don't hurt me. Huh? He likes her body. Yeah, he's in love with, with her body. Although his heart is falling to Ooh, hey now, maybe. His heart is falling for her body too, that's good. That's good. <laughs> First it was just his body falling into her body because if anyone knows, that's how that happens. Oh, I fell, I tripped. You see what's going on there? All right, so is it real cliche or subversive? Is it subversive? We still don't know yet, huh? Is he overthrowing anything? Subversive is overthrowing something that's a social norm, like typically. It's super cliche. He's not overthrowing anything here. He's like falling right into it. But he's being honest. Just being honest, right? Don't want to meet your daddy. Just want you in my caddy. I'm not going to sing the other part. I'm going to say the other part. But you, you get the point, right? So there, there is something honest Sometimes, but he's definitely just fallen straight into the cliche. And the message is what? Anyone, come on. Topic of relationships? Maybe? Yeah? And what's he saying? Yeah, he just wants to have sex, I think. So that one seems a little cliche. All right, what else do we have on here? We have talked about DJ Khaled. I said it without using his voice. That's impressive, right? Has anyone, uh, has anyone seen how you do like a, a Boston accent? Park the car in Harvard Yard. T to get your, your mind into the state where you can do the, some people have to do that kind of thing. You get how that's a Boston accent? So with DJ Khaled, I've had to constantly like say his name how he says his name. DJ Khaled, in order to like, get it so that I'm not saying it like the proper way, which is Khaled? No? No one's ever... Whatever. Okay, so I'm just proud of myself. I was finally able to say it like DJ Khaled. Yeah, that's hard. We might make fun of him. He's really easy. His message is garbage. He's a hustler, but he's not really talented. I haven't seen any talent from him. I hear that he can pick out a beat and he can put people together. That's a businessman. But Bruno Mars, there's, it's pretty undeniable that that guy is just like incredibly gifted, right? You guys like Bruno Mars, right? I mean, he's not like, you don't like work out to him at the gym or anything, but like, or maybe if, you know, but guys, you're probably not, it's probably not blasting in your headphones, right? That'd be Selena Gomez, yeah? So, he's incredibly talented. He could probably end world hunger with his voice. He's just incredible. He also writes music, too. So, like, Ed Sheeran, he's with those guys, writes music, not the other guy, but at least the lyricist guy, wrote, like, tons of stuff, like that song, um, Go Love Yourself, or is that what it's called? That's the equivalent, right, he's saying? The Justin Bieber song. Yeah, love yourself. Ed Sheeran wrote that with, with that other guy. Bruno Mars does the same thing. He, uh, that Bubble Butt song by Major Lazer, he wrote that hook. You know, the one that says Bubble Butt, Bubble, Bubble, Bubble Butt. Yeah, he wrote that. Uh, and then that part, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that whole hook was his, his doing. So he, he writes songs all over the place for people too, right? And you've heard some of his stuff. Now, you wouldn't look at him like DJ Khaled, right? 
It's totally different. So we've got a song of his here. Do you guys know this one? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I got a condo in Manhattan. Baby girl, what's happening? <laughs> you and your ass invited, so gone get to clapping. Now, what does he mean by that? Does he mean like clapping like this? What does he mean? Does he mean like clapping, clapping like this, right? Like this? Yes, but a different way to turn it on. Oh, 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 okay. See, I was, I was unclear on that. Go pop it for a player, pop, pop it for me, turn around and drop it for a player, drop, drop it for me. Oh, okay, I see now. I see what he was doing there, yeah. I'll rent a beach house in Miami, wake up with no jammies, lobster tail for dinner, Julio, get that scampi. By the way, Julio, got to give Julio props. He, he always brings up Julio, and this guy, man, he, Julio, get the stretch. Like, he is, Julio is working hard. <laughs> Julio is, is doing his job. I mean, even if he doesn't make the scampi, he's at least finding the right spot to get it from Uber Eats, right? Like, that guy is hustling, man. Anyways, you got it if you want it. Got, got it if you want it. Said you got it if you want it. Take my wallet if you want it. That's, that's generous, right? He's been what a generous guy. All right. Jump in the Cadillac. Girl, let's put some miles on it. Anything you want just to put a smile on you. You deserve it, baby. You deserve it all. And I'm going to give it to you. Watch out now. He's going to give it to you. Going to give it to you. <laughs> Cool jewelry shining so bright, strawberry champagne on ice, lucky for you, that's what I like, that's what I like, lucky for you, that's what I like, that's what I like. Sex by the fire at night, silk sheets and diamonds all white, lucky for you, that's what I like, that's what I like. Uh, what do you guys think? What is this song saying? What is he saying or what, it, what is this song about overall? Is it another relationship song? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, well, so their relationship is based on what? Like a pimp. Well, and he says he's a player, at least. So there's an exchange going on, and that exchange is money and goods for services. But maybe that's just like what she has to give and what he has to give, right? What do you think about their relationship? Is it mutual? Are they equal? Are they equal parties in this? Of course not. Does he look to her as his equal? Of course not. No? Why not? Show me in the lyrics. Tell me if it's there. Where is it? He doesn't say it directly, but it's so good. He doesn't? Does anyone think he says it directly? You're invited, okay. That's a start. Yeah, gone to get to clapping is, is like more of a command, possibly. There's no narrative for the girl. That's right, she doesn't have a voice. But, I mean, his voice is beautiful, so. <laughs> There's something more direct, though, isn't there? You mean like lucky for you is what I like? What? Lucky for you, that's what I like. Lucky for you. If he didn't already like it, you know, by the way, that means he is bragging about liking strawberry champagne, uh, which, I mean, yeah, 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 but like, I mean, I don't feel secure enough in myself to say that I like strawberry champagne. Also, I feel like I would wake up with a hangover even if I didn't drink very much, because you guys know the more sugar in it, like girl drinks will give you a hangover way quicker than something else. Just saying. What do you so mean by girl drinks? Exactly. What do you think do you I mean, mean by, by girl, girl drinks? <laughs> I did do air quotes, right? What do I mean by, by girl drinks? I feel like we're distracted. Do you get what I mean by the equ equalness in the relationship? It's not there because he's like lucky for you, right? It's not he's lucky. It's lucky for you. I'm so lucky that you're with me. No, you're lucky that I have all this money and I'm bringing you along. 
this guy, who could probably cure cancer with his voice, just... Not the lyric. He goes and he produces this garbage. Anyway, real cliche is subversive. Cliche. And the message, what does this do now then, if you're thinking about it? Because, let's say even going back to Chance the Rapper's lyrics too. So, I have a hard time believing that there are women out there like that. Like, I really have a hard time believing it. And yet, I've had tons of students say, no, they're out there. And this is the thing. If there are women out there who actually get turned on by things, like physical commodities, like cars or like diamonds, then the only way that happened is because someone taught it to them. And that probably means, like, you don't even know what a diamond is, right? When you start in life, do you have any clue as to that being something of value? No, the value gets ascribed to it. And then we have, we have this. So it's because of songs like this, isn't it? And so what's the message here? And what's the significance for society? Because not only does it teach men to treat women like this, it teaches women to perform like this and to be fulfilled in this. Is that uh, scary? A little bit. All right, uh, let's, let's move on. Let's get a little bit more. I mean, it's up to you. You can argue it's real too, because he's being honest. He does, he's not sugarcoating it. I mean, he's, he's throwing money at it, making it rain. Not yet. We're doing thrift shop first. What do you think this one is? What, 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 what? Oh, we're not going to read the lyrics, uh, but they're there in front of you. What is he saying in this song? What if I got big no, not that. <laughs> <laughs> What's his main aim in this song? What's he doing? He's thrift shopping. He's thrift shopping. Is he sending a message? He's saying, why buy it? Probably, that's, that's quite clear, yes. Isn't it because rappers are usually, they're associated with like buying a bunch of expensive overpriced clothes? That is definitely a thing. So that's the cliche. What's he doing to the cliche? Flipping it on its head. And he even makes some arguments about it. Where are those arguments? I'll give you a hint. Go to verse 2. Yeah, that Gucci, it's hella tight. Bro, that's like... $50 for a t-shirt. You're wasting your money, right? Being tricked by business, that's some ignorant. Bishop. She is how the guy says it, right? What else? He's got two more arguments in that section. Two more different arguments. One, you're paying way too much. Two, being tricked by business. Well, that's part of it, I feel like. I mean, it could be the other parts too, but what's, there's something else. There's a separate argument. That it's unique, meaning it's not unique because you wear that, yeah, that's hella dope. And then there's like five other people wearing that shirt at the club. So you're not any different. You just look basic now. Congratulations on your $50 basic shirt. So that's the second argument. You're not interesting with that. What else? One more. Remember, it always has to be in the text. So, maybe at the end of verse 2? If you're trying to get girls from the brand, by spending money on it, by looking good, rather than your character, it's not going to happen. He makes three arguments right there in, those, in that short amount of space. You might find all your arguments in one spot. You might have to go all over the text. You might be able to find one here and then find one over the trajectory of the whole thing. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff you can work with with it. So this one is... Is it... Wait, what? This one is... Subversive. Because he is overthrowing it and making fun of it. And he even makes fun of himself when he's like, I had a broken keyboard. I bought a broken <laughs> keyboard. Because that does happen too. You're never going to find a leopard mink. He's exaggerating a little bit about some stuff. I don't know if I told you guys yet, but I too, before Macklemore did this, 
I've been buying my clothes at thrift stores. In fact, once this came out, I was like, damn, tons of people are going to buy my style now. Yeah, like everything I wear except for my socks and my underwear is from a thrift store. Even my $900 Italian leather shoes that I bought for $6. Am I going to find anything better than that at like Nordstrom Rack? Not for that much. Not even close. Um, I have other shoes that are not from there, but typically they break. Like the ones I was wearing the other day, they're from Ross and they fell apart. These ones, they're a little scuffed now, but they weren't even scuffed when I got them. That's just because I'm clumsy, so whatever. You guys think less of me now? You sure? You want to know how much I care? Hold on, I got it right here. It's right, right there. You want to see it? Little. Oh crap! I dropped it. Hold on. Hold on. It's... I think that's it right there. Oh, it's a piece of lint. Okay. Well, whatever. Whatever. I think you get it. Um, let's uh, let's move on to daylight. Who wanted to do daylight? Here I am waiting. I'll have to leave soon. No, you wanted to sing it. I'm not singing. Okay, how about the chorus at least? Maroon 5. This guy is so dreamy. Seriously? Cuz when the daylight. Or wait, how's it go? Yeah. And when the daylight, huh? Comes, I gotta go. But tonight. <laughs> But tonight I'm gonna, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah, cause in the daylight we'll be on our own. But tonight I'm gonna hold you so close. So, what? What do you think? Real cliche, subversive. <clears throat> cliche. He's not. He's not overthrowing anything. He's going right into it. But he is being honest. So that's nice. What about this one? I could be your hero, baby. I can kiss away your pain. Uh, I will stand by you forever. You can take my breath away. Wow. Such lyrics. Forever. Ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he sings this at every show to a different woman. In fact, probably multiple women. He's probably like picking them out in the audience and then he'll sing that hook or that chorus until he's got enough of them that's for his harem later. I actually have no idea. He's probably married now to one of them. But yeah, this song definitely got him laid. I can, I'm pretty sure I'm not jumping too far by saying that. What's he saying here? Is this realistic at all? Like we were talking about, well, at least he's being honest before. Is this honest? No, this is a fat lie. This is what he thinks every woman wants to hear, and he's probably... Really? Women don't want to hear this? I mean, more than hearing it, they want to see it, but they at least want to hear it too, right? No one wants to hear that. Do you want to hear that? Okay, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase it. He'd say... <laughs> I can be your slob, baby. I can be your, your paycheck. I could be your, your couch potato. I could be your, your baby daddy. I can stand by you so long as you're not embarrassing me and when you're on your period and, right? How about this part? At the very end, he says, am I in too deep? Have I lost my mind? Well, I don't care. You're here tonight. So wait, if it was a different girl here tonight, then he would be with her forever? I'm confused. This is a little complicated. So I think you get that. Take a break. Oh, why would you get me singing it? Are you guys ready for this? Okay, so Castle on the Hill. Yeah? Do you want to start it? When I was six years old. Yeah? Music is very powerful. Just watch a TV show and imagine the music not being there when it, you're like super emotional. Never mind. It's awkward. Do you get what I'm saying? Like sometimes dialogue is just shit and the only reason why it's getting you emotional is because the song makes you emotional. 
There is something to be said for that. It's just that that's not what we're covering. When I was six years old, I broke my leg. I was running from my brother and his friends, and I tasted the sweet perfume of the mountain grass I rolled down. I was younger then, take me back to when. I found my heart and broke it here, made friends and lost them through the years. And I've not seen the roaring fields in so long. I know I've grown, but I can't wait to go home. I'm on my way, driving at 90 down those country lanes, singing to Tiny Dancer. And I miss the way you make me feel it's real. We watched the sunset over the castle on the hill. 15 years old and smoking hand-rolled cigarettes, running from the law through the backfields and getting drunk with my friends. Had my first kiss on a Friday night. I don't reckon I did it right, but I was younger then. Take me back to when. We found weekend jobs when we got paid. We'd buy cheap spirits and drink them straight. Me and my friends have not thrown up in so long. Oh, how we've grown. But I can't wait to go home. All right, tell me, what do you think this song is? Why would you say that? Because I don't know if it's really secret to shake, because like, reading this, I feel like picture myself or like how I was now, like 15 years old. Sure. What are the things? That um, remember, you got to get the exact evidences. Friends that come and go, yeah, that's something, there's something there. Is there anything else stronger that will point to realistic though? Can't wait to go home. I mean, we got nostalgia, that's for sure. We've got, we've got rolling hills and castles watching sunsets. Sounds a little cliche, especially when you think about how many castles are in England. You know what they call them there? They call them piles. You know what we call piles here? Yeah, they have so many castles there. By the way, pile didn't mean a bad thing. If you read like a 15th century, 16th century poem and they refer to a pile, they're referring to like rocks that have been stacked and built into towers and castles. Anyway, I'm an English major, so I can't get stuff. But what would make this real then? Sure, that's not necessarily something you hear about in songs that are cliche. What are the details that make it real? You guys are gonna fail this if you know. Oh, okay. There, we're getting somewhere now. We're buying cheap spirits. What else? What else is an example of this being real if it is real? Not just him saying it's real, by the way. <laughs> No, we already said that one. Did we really? Yeah, we did. <laughs> it's not really that strong. Um, sure, but there's the... When I was seven years old, I something, something done. It's smoked catchy. some weed. See, because that other song I'm referring to is super romantic. Super cliche. What about when you found this part and then wrote it there? You still I, touched on like every other lyric. Just go to the ones that you haven't mentioned now. <laughs> what here sounds real? The first kiss on the Friday night, right? What about it? He doesn't reckon he did it right. I don't reckon I did it right. That sounds real. Why? Because no one does it right. Their first kiss, no one does it right. They're like, I just keep my mouth open and <laughs> shove my tongue down their throat, right? Yeah, no one does their first kiss, right? It's messy, and it's also him being vulnerable, and, and it's more confessional. Do you see this? It's a confession of something that no one would be bragging about. That's the difference between real and cliche. Cliches brag, and real confesses. Something that's probably embarrassing. What else? That sounds romantic. When did he smell that? What did he do in the process of rolling down the mountain? He broke his leg. No one's really bragging about breaking their leg unless it's so that they can get all the cute girls to sign their cast. So, I don't see him talking about that here. What else? Anything else? Tiny Dancer? You brag about singing Tiny Dancer? 
at the gym and you're like, oh, hold me close, let's have a dance. <laughs> yeah, all the other guys in the gym, they're like, that's my jam, turn that up. When that comes on the radio, right? No, 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 no. Mariah Carey comes on and the guys are like right about to do a set and they just like unplug their headphone jack and then they just like, yes. Yeah, right yeah, no one's bragging about that, right? There we go. That was the one that I was really going for. Thank you. Thank you. What does he say? Oh, how we have grown. Really? Is that growing? No, he's making fun of himself. Yeah, well, so it's either that, either, oh, congratulations, you're now an alcoholic, or he's learned to control his liquor, but it's kind of like, yeah, good job, man. That's not... If that's your standard for growing into a mature adult, I mean, it's, it's a little silly. He's making fun of it. Oh, how we've grown. That's, that's comical right there. He's, he's putting himself on blast. So yeah, you guys see this. This song, yeah, I would argue, at least for me, that this is quite real. Even if he just is saying it, not just because he's saying it's real. And it's real. It's real, guys. Um, all right, so this time, you guys have to pull out the stops. Like, don't, don't make me flesh this out for you. We're reading this while it plays. You guys, take your time, underline stuff, and think about it hard. What's this song saying? Like, what's the message? There's some nostalgic message in this one, but what's the message in Girls Like You? So what do you think? Uh, what is this song about first? What's it about? Huh? What is it about? Like not even just like the meaning, what kind of, what's the topic? Love, Love or relationships. But yeah, he's specifically talking to girls like her or you. How does he describe this girl? Is it? Is it a party girl? Where? She needs sound like a sweet girl at first, and then, and then they give the girl a voice, and it's like... Uh. Oh, that's a good point. The girl does get a voice. <laughs> yeah. So Cardi B, she does a, a verse in this, this is also why it gets complicated too, because remember, he might not have written this song. She probably did write her lyric. Typically, rappers write their lyrics, except when they're Drake. Um, oh, too, too soon? Um, he threw out money at people. I guess that was enough, right? God's plan. God's plan. Like me again. So she then has her voice in. So it's, there's at least two people's ideas coming across here. We've got her voice. That's good. I like that. What does he want out of this relationship? What is this girl like? He's drunk. He's a million alcohol problem, but like she still stays with him, so maybe uh, she's a, a wifey material, I guess. So this is <laughs> this is uh, it's questionable still. We we need to see a little bit more about the relationship, but I there's something with what you're saying for sure. What is this girl like, and what is their relationship like? It's a little bit more. Relationship. Is it toxic? What's toxic? Yeah, so there's conflict and there's parts of we stayed up all night trying to make things right. Sure, there's that element of it, but what is, well, I still don't know what their relationship is. What's their relationship supposed to be? What is right? Trying to make things right. What is right for their relationship? What is their relationship supposed to look like according to him? Trying to have their stuff together. No, look to the text. It's Oh, what does that mean? Smoking weed, I guess. 
So, did anyone not know what backwoods are? These are backwoods. So if you've heard of rappers referring to Swisher Sweets or Black and Milds like Tupac, no one smokes a Swisher Sweet. They cut them open and then they put weed in them and now you've got a blunt. By the way, don't ever do this, it's still poison. Alright, so in this case, rolling a backwoods, it's already rolled, which means that you're obviously re-rolling it into a blunt. So one quality she needs is she needs to know how to roll a blunt because he's not doing it, she's doing it, right? Roll that backwards, baby. I saw someone on the internet trying to interpret this and they thought it was him pandering to like country music stuff. It's like, do you not know what a backwoods is, bro? Come on. Now you guys know, by the way, don't smoke. It's bad for your health. Okay, so this is what they're doing together. They smoke weed. And like talk about things, I guess, and like pay attention. Maybe. Maybe we do see them doing that. I think they party together because like you run guys like me, he parties, and then there we go. Sundown. Yeah, what's what's more in this hook? What's in the chorus? Girls like you run around with guys like me till sun goes down. When I come through, I need a girl like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls like you love fun. Yeah, me too. Right? So it's fun. Smoking weed is fun, right? What else is fun to do with Boys and girls. Smash. Sure. <laughs> Is that what it's called now? We just say like, what? that's so romantic sounding. You really just like nailed it there. Baby, don't you just wanna, I don't even know how you would like put that into a, wanna smash. it's really just like a text. It's just a one word text, smash. Hulk smash. <laughs> Yo, baby, I'm gonna smash you like a Hulk. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, need to calm down. Yeah. A lot of people use that term, like a lot. Yeah, no, no, no. I totally have heard this. I just didn't really put it together um, enough yet. Ah, oh, that's that was good. Um, so there are. What is this coming through? When I come through. Like the U up text. Hey baby, I'm gonna be on tour in your area in three months. You wanna do the same thing we did last time? You down? Think about this, right? Is he having a continuous relationship with this person or is this a relationship that they have over time that takes, like, we haven't seen each other in a while? And then obviously, what's that relationship gonna be like when they do come back together again? He's like, yeah, she obviously is not an idiot and knows that he's hooking up with a whole bunch of other people, and maybe she's... You spent the weekend getting even? Ooh. Maybe she's like, well, if he can go and do that stuff, why can't I? Also, what is this drunk thing, though? Maybe, maybe she cares about him anyway. Maybe it's 6.45. Maybe I'm barely alive. Maybe you've taken my shit for the last time. Yeah, maybe I know that I'm drunk. Maybe I know that you're the one. Maybe I'm thinking it's better that you drive. What does he want in this relationship? I think he just wants to have like, sex with her while she's kind of more attached to him being like this relationship. Sex with her and an Uber driver. Yeah. Right? Maybe you're the, I, maybe you're the one to drive me around while I, you know, get high and drunk, and then also we can hook up at the same time, right? So she's getting, you know, she's well-rounded in doing everything he wants her to do. What about Cardi? Not too long ago, I was dancing for dollars. She seems to say this in every song, right? By the way, remember, I'm from the streets. What's she saying in this relationship? She's, she's got the other side of it, right? Yeah, she she's definitely saying that. Also, all those other girls are what? Yeah, it's not a real word. In fact, she probably means Fugazi, which is just a punk band which made up the word. And then yes, the think about it, it's a fake word, so it means fake. It means something that's not good. 
So I'm sure those girls are nice enough, but you need someone to owe to spice it up. Who are these other girls, and what does spicing it up mean? What's going on there? There's a moral hang-up. At least some people in society would look at this relationship as forbidden. But she's uh, she doesn't play when it comes to her heart, so that's good, right? What's she interested in? She's not interested in a white horse and a carriage. She's not materialistic, right? Oh wait, what did you say? Oh, oh, she's just into 21st century. And then yeah, the last part is just all right. Calm down. She is. She is that girl. Did she see the carrots? Wow. It's hard not to like the song, isn't it? It's so hard not to like the song that when you watch the video, every cool girl you know, or, or like every girl that they show in the video, you're like, that's a cool girl. Like it's just him and, and the camera just rotates around him and there's always like a cool girl behind him. Like, like he's got Wonder Woman, he's got the girl from uh, Stranger Things, he's got like all these people, athletes, things like that. Um, he's even got Ellen. Yeah. Now remember, it's not about the video, but the whole point is who is susceptible to this. Even they would dance in the video for a song that's about this. They're not paying attention to what the song is about. He's probably not paying attention. He didn't write it. There's no way he wrote this song. He probably didn't write the song. He might have wrote a little bit of it. I mean, he used to write music, but now Taylor Swift doesn't even need to write her own music. Because like there's so many people that can get to write music for them now. And so what's the message here and what's the significance for society? Because not only does it teach men to treat women like this, it teaches women to perform like this and to be fulfilled in this.